What it is, what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It. Ash Said It.com. Ash Said It.com. This is the Ash Said It Daily Podcast Show. I appreciate you guys for all of your love and support. Over 1,000 episodes, half a million streams worldwide and growing. It wouldn't be possible without you guys. So I thank you every single day. Today we are blessed to talk to an artiste herself. I mean, she's just spearheaded something that is completely out of the box. When I talk about somebody that is thinking all on their own, this whole other stratosphere, and taking that leap of faith, I have the wonderful Asia Erickson, wearpops.com. Hey, Asia. (laughs) Hello, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing today? Excellent. Awesome. All right, Asia. Where did the idea for Wear Pups, Wear Pups come from? Uh, well, it started when I was a kid. I mean, um, I don't really remember a time when I wasn't thinking about that. Uh, I was really raised in a horror-loving family, and uh, one of my obsessions was werewolves, and I just mm. thought I wanted to have my own werewolf. So. <laughs> okay. So as you were, you know, as you kept this concept as growing up, like, when did you start to experiment with making werewolf puppies or were, were pups? Yeah, were pups. Um, I met my husband in uh, 2008, I believe it was. And mm. um, after we were together for a bit, well, he was already an effects artist. I mm. uh, started messing around with some of his materials in his workshop. And I said, you know, if I make something... If I sculpt something out of clay, can you make a mold for it? And, you know, he was encouraging me to go ahead and do that. And that's how the first wear pup was born. Mm -hmm. I was finally able to realize this idea that I had since I was a kid. Yeah, that is absolutely just the detail to them is just like I I look and I've been looking and I've been, you know, I've been I've been browsing the net. I've been seeing different views and different pictures of the (laughs) wear pups. And just the attention to detail is absolutely mind-blowing. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Yeah, it's like if I, you know, didn't know, you know, werewolves are real and I'm like, you know what, that's a little too close. (laughs) It's a little too close to to reality. that was one of my (laughs) goals and that's still one of my goals is to try and make them as realistic as possible. I had this idea of how it would look scientifically Mm. for a human and canine hybrid and that was Mm. what I was trying to realize. So, I, I will definitely say you succeeded. <laughs> you exceeded Thank you. Any, <laughs> Thank you. any possible um, expectations for it. Now, in the beginning, as you were starting something brand new, you know, I'm, I'm sure that maybe a close knit of friends kind of knew what you were doing and kind of experimenting with. What were some of those first challenges that you were facing as you were trying this new art? Well, I hadn't really dealt into sculpting yet. I did. Uh, a little bit of experimentation when I was a kid, you know, with Mm. child-friendly clay and stuff like that, but really, um, really learning how to sculpt, uh, I I was going over the detail, and I really wanted to get it perfect, so it took me quite a while um, to produce those first parts, because I wanted to make sure, you know, that the nose and everything was exactly the way I wanted it. Mm -hmm. Um, The first pups that I made were in latex, not silicone. Mm. And I didn't know how to apply hair or anything, so I had hand-sculpted hair on the dolls, on the first dolls. Mm. So that was, you know, it wasn't quite what I had in mind because I wanted them to have, like, the real fur. Right. So that was one of the first challenges to get over is, uh, you know, how am I going to make this look more realistic? Well, now it looks like a sculpted, you know, baby doll. Right. So Mm. once we moved into uh, silicone, I took the the plunge with that. Um, I was able to learn how to hand root hair, which mm. was a big difference, and that that's how the wear pups that you see today came about. Gotcha. So let me ask the difference as far as the silicone and the latex were, and and this is me. I have no kind of idea or any education whatsoever with sculpting sure. anything, but as far as the latex versus the silicone, were you not able to? I guess, put the, you know, implant the the fur in latex versus silicone? Right, so uh, with with latex, it would be a lot more difficult. You would break a lot more needles, and it doesn't Mm. really um, stay in the same way. So usually when people are doing latex props, they'll um, glue hair on as Mm. opposed to rooting it in. 
it can be done, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a, a lot it's harder. A, it's a tedious. Okay. So, well, see, I'm learning stuff, Asia. You're educating me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's cool. And, and, and also the, with the silicone, it, it looks, it's got a translucency to it. Mm. So it'll look more like real skin as opposed gotcha. to the latex. Mm. So it, 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 it changed a lot once I switched over to silicone and it got more the, the result that I really wanted. Gotcha. Gotcha. See, it's always good to ask questions, people. You never know. Definitely. <laughs> it's always good. <laughs> All right, you guys. So hang tight with us one moment. We're going to be back with Asia and more more and more about the Pups. Because I got tons of more questions, Asia, but I know that you got to go. So we're going we're gonna to hang tight for a minute. You guys, we'll be right back. No problem. You spend one third of your life sleeping. Why not make it comfortable with Casper? Ash Brown here from Ash Said It Daily. Casper products are cleverly designed to mimic human curves, providing supportive comfort for all body types. When I'm touring around the world, there's always one important detail missing. My Casper bed. I can't wait to get home for a restful night's sleep. There's nothing like it. The experts at Casper work tirelessly to make a quality sleep surface that cradles your natural geometry in all the right places. The prices are affordable because Casper cuts out the middleman and sells directly to you. They're all designed, developed, and assembled right here in the U.S. Don't forget about Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep-on-it trial. Get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash ash and using ash, A-S-H, at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. Get your Casper mattress for a restful night. Visit casper.com slash ash, promo code A-S-H. Welcome back to the Ash Said It Daily podcast show. We're chatting with Asia Erickson, wearpups.com, and we're talking about her babies, you know, because because I'm sure Asia, you know, as you're hand sculpting all of these little, they're all your babies, you know, and you're kind of, oh yeah, you know, you're, you're kind of oh, yeah. spreading your your babies out and around the world. But I wanted to ask, as far as customization goes, how do you handle that? I mean, does a customer come to you and say, "Hey, I want a wear pup that looks X, Y, and Z"? Or do you give them a guideline as what to pick? Um, it really depends on the customer. Um, mm. A lot of times they'll have a very specific idea of what they want it to look like. Um, I have mm. several head sculpts to choose from. And they'll say, you know, I want it to have uh, black fur with white dots above the eyes or a striped mm. mohawk, something like that, and, you know, green eyes. And I can go with that, or um, they'll give me a picture of their dog, and they'll tell me to match that, or they'll tell me to come up with something for them and just, you know, sort of give me artistic control over it, which gotcha. is always really fun. So okay. I, there's a few different ways people go about that. Okay, cool. So from conception to finish, approximately how long does it take you to make a wear pup? Um... It can take uh, anywhere from a couple of weeks to sometimes over a month. Uh, I usually have a few going at once to sort of mix it up a little bit and to uh, save time a little. So um, it can be very different all depending on the markings, uh, the thickness of the hair. That's definitely one. Uh, the type of hair I'm using. Um, all different factors go into it, but you know, it, it is tedious rooting the hair. That's the yeah, main part. Yeah, I'd imagine. It'll take me about a, a, a day or two to paint it, and mm. then to lay all the hair is just hours and hours of stabbing. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a specific moment that you realized, wow, this this concept that I had since I was a kid is actually a lot bigger than I ever could have imagined. You know, it, it's it's amazing when I think about it because I had no idea that anybody would even be interested in that. I mean, when I was making the first one, I was making that for me. Right. And I, I, I ended up bringing them to, I made a few and I brought them to a convention and uh, mm. they all sold out. You know, and every time we were going to a convention, I was bringing those first little ones with me and yeah. they were all selling out. People would come to the table and say, do you have any more? Do you have any more? And I just never realized that other people would really like the concept of baby werewolves as much as I did. I mean, it was great <laughs> finding these people. <laughs> so, it, it's been a lot of fun. Yes. It's, it's exciting. I mean, it was very freeing and liberating to be able to bring something out of your mind into reality. I think yes. that's one of the greatest things about sculpting. Mm, I 
gonna say so. Now, when I was first browsing your website and I saw pictures of Robert England, I was like, oh my god, it's pretty! <laughs> it's pretty cool! Uh, I, I can't say, I can't say enough good things about him. He is, him and his wife are amazing. They've been the most supportive, great mentors um, for me and my husband since yeah. day one. I mean, they were the first wear pup fans. I showed them the pups before anybody else because they're they're dog lovers like me. Yeah. And you know they love them right away, and they've also sort of steered me in the right direction as far as you know steps to take and things like that. We've got a children's book coming out in October, Ooh. and uh, Robert, he's the one that really pushed me in the direction to go with that. And mm-hmm. um, they're just he's writing the forward for it. Wow. They're just the nicest people um, taking on a very parental role to yeah. me and my husband. And, yeah, we, we call them our mom and dad. So. Oh, that's such a blessing. That is awesome. You know, be, mom and be, ma- be mom and be dad, which is like bastard maniac and father. And they call it the bastard kid. It's wonderful. They're, they're great people. <laughs> and I have to say that the Alice Cooper pup was absolutely adorable i was just like oh my gosh oh, thank you. i love that pup thank you <laughs> that was a, that was that was really fun because he ended up um you know touring with that pup as part of the show for about three years that and so you know cool. i was sort of shocked by it but you know they had it in the show and his wife would be on stage as like the the creepy nurse and she would grab it by the leg and like swing it around and put it in her mouth <laughs> and stuff like that and <laughs> We didn't know what he was going to do with it, but my husband, he reinforced all the joints because he knew that he's been an Alice Cooper fan for a long time. Yeah. He knew Alice Cooper was going to abuse it if he was going to use this thing. He's like, <laughs> Alice Cooper just beats the crap out of his dolls, so you got to do something. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I would be honored if Alice Cooper beat the crap out of my dolls. So <laughs> It, it was really fun. It was great. Aww. Alice was really cool, dude. Too. It is. Now, last but certainly not least, Asia, what advice can you offer to any person now that has a dream on their heart that just hasn't acted on it yet? Well, I mean, I really think no matter what, if you have passion to do something, create something, you know, you really got to go for it. And mm-hmm. it can be scary at first. I mean, it's a risk. Uh, even now, um, things are kind of a roller coaster for me. We say it's feast or famine, and it's true in every sense of that phrase. But when I started, I was a cleaning lady in an office building, and I didn't know, you know, what was going to happen. But I started selling the first little wear pups, and I just wanted to go full time into this and really give it more time than my job was allowing me. So I quit, you know, and I just sort of threw caution to the wind with that and mm-hmm. it's been enough to support me and my family ever since I mean it, if I can do it you can do it Absolutely. so if you have any dream of creating something of just taking a different turn and if people are going to tell you you're crazy and stuff like that just don't listen to them mm-hmm. follow your passion follow your passion Asia Erickson Absolutely. Asia thank you so much for joining us today it has been a pleasure chatting with you. Oh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, You have an open invitation back in October as the book release, because I want to talk to you about the book. Yes, so we're we're, we're putting this on the record. So you definitely have to come back, and we have to talk about the book, and I know that you'll have tons more stuff to chat about with us. So um, we appreciate that. (laughs) Definitely. Um, Asia, let everyone know the best way to get in contact with you and um, to follow you on social media. Definitely. Um, Instagram.com slash wearpups. Um, Facebook, wearpups. Uh, wearpups.com. You can contact me through there. Sounds like a plan. All right, you guys. We appreciate you so very much. Keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me. Just watch. Watch what I do. That's right. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for. We're doing this for the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is way better. Until next time, you guys.